Hey guys, before we start the show, I want to let you know that we set up a Patreon to give you more ways to support what we do here at Ballin' and VA. There are different tiers available and anything that you can contribute goes a long way. Thank you for your support and enjoy the show. Good evening, good evening today. Welcome to another episode of Ballin' and VA. And today I'm doing football. You know, because everybody always say, well, when are you going to have the football guys on? When are you going to have the football guys on? So today, I got a legend in the house, and I got one of the local coaches here. He's at a, at a legendary program, and Coach Taylor is probably one of the funniest guys that I've met over the past month, and one of, I would say one of my biggest supporters on the show since I've known him. So today, I got Coach Troy Taylor from L.C. Bird. And I also have the legend himself from Hermitage High School, and now he's at King William as an offensive coordinator. Or I was, yeah, I'm out this year. Oh, you out? Okay, well, he went out again. <laughs> uh, we say a retired coach from uh, state champion King William Cavaliers, but we also know him from the legendary Hermitage Panthers and the run that he has made over there. So, welcome, Coach King, and welcome, Coach Taylor. How y'all doing? Great, excited to be here. Thank you, man. I'm, you know, like I told you, man, when you got a legend in the house and Coach Taylor hooked this up, you know, make you a little nervous, got to make you a little sharp. So, but I'm gonna try to do the best I can. Coach Taylor, what's been going on, man? Just got done practice. Uh, our mom squad, that's the moms that feed us. They fed the team and uh, got to play James River tomorrow. So, you know, whenever this airs, you know, this is, we play James River the next day. So, Okay, yes, so what do we expect from L.C. Bird in 2022, 2023 season? Well, just right now, just focusing on getting better and playing James River. And Jacob Hodges, who's the head coach over there, he does a great job. And uh, we just got to play well. Well, we ain't got to worry about that. Look, man, Bird is going to always be Bird, man. You know, um, give us some insight because I know that you guys – with the COVID year, everything has been short. Is things getting back to normal? Because I know y'all had to deal with, like, the condensed schedule. You had to deal with as far as, like, you know, like the, the social distancing part of all that. Has things kind of gotten back to normal now? Yes, sir. Everything's gotten pretty much back to normal. Um, that's good for our program because, you know, we, we're a year-round program. We believe in developing players. Mm -hmm. So you just want to keep getting better and, you know, looking forward to playing uh, tomorrow night. James Wait, was that game at Bird or? It's at uh, James River. James River. Okay. Well, look, we have to get out there and support you, man. Yes, sir. Thank you. Yeah. Coach Kane, how's, been, how's it been, man? It's been good. And like you said, uh, after I stepped away from Hermitage, I took about two years off and, and – my wife thought it was permanent. <laughs> then, uh, my offensive line coach, Coach Moore, he got a job at his alma mater's dream job. Okay. Coach Moore gave me 17 years. I figured I owed him a couple. Uh, so when he wanted to start to get that program going the right direction, I told him I'd help out. First, I was going to be the JV coach. Okay. And so I could have the weekends to myself, and that quickly transitioned to the quarterback coach and the offense coordinator probably <laughs> in about two weeks. Uh, He's a smart so, coach. So uh, exactly. we had a good run. Um, I think I paid my dues, 2 to 17. Seems like a good odd there. Um, but uh, they're off to a good start. They're going to they open up, I think, this weekend too. Okay. Um, and then uh, I'm back to retirement. Yeah, man, you, you went out on top. You know, state champion, man. How was that the exciting part? I mean, you know, for me, I know as a parent, but as a coach, man, when you finally get that ring, how does it make you feel, man? It's more of a satisfaction. I think it was, you know, uh, that's, that was always the goal ever since I was a little kid. Mm -hmm. And uh, actually, in my history, I was a state runner-up as a, as a wrestler. Mm -hmm. I, as a wrestling coach, I coached a state runner-up. Mm -hmm. As a football coach, I coached a team that was state runners-up. So uh, it's finally nice to get that one on top. Yeah, man. I, I know. Like I said, I was there a couple. I told you off air. Like I said, I was there at that run in 2010 that you had when you had that team with uh, Curtis Grant and uh, Brendan Reddick and Diamond Bailey. And y'all had a kicker, man. I don't know who the name of that kicker was, but he could kick like 50, 60 yards, man. We were very fortunate to always have strong kicking game. Yeah, Coach man. Coach Paul, our defense quarter, made sure that was straight. Yeah, man. Y'all had a great team there. Coach Taylor, why don't you give us a little bit of background, man? You know, you know tell us where you know, where it all started from. You, uh, what made you get into coaching, and you know, 
you know, I know you went to L.C. Bird, but give us a little bit of background about yourself for those who don't know you. Yeah, I'm probably allowed to start crying here in a minute. Um, <laughs> don't, don't, yeah, don't I, I'm from L.C. Bird. I'm from Courthouse Green, you know, right near L.C. Bird. And, um, you know, I got out of college at UVA Wise mm -hmm. and didn't really know what I wanted to do. So uh, there was a, a freshman coach named Mike Murrow who's still on our staff. Okay. And he, he got me and my brother, uh, Tony Taylor, uh, to come up there to practice at Bird, and I showed up, and it was Coach Bedwell's first year. Okay. And, and Coach Kane, he was the offensive and defensive line coach on the varsity. And when I walked in the door, I can still remember, it was Coach Paul Kett and Coach Bedwell sitting there, and uh, he thought I might be a new player, quarterback. <laughs> yeah, so I, was, and I was like, no, nah, I'm actually here to coach. And they made me the JV offensive and defensive line coach, and, and I was hooked. Um, and then, like, after that season was over with, Coach Kane told me, he said, Troy, if you want to be a coach, you, you got to be a teacher. So, you know, I put in some applications, and, you know, my plan was for me to go to Bird and, and be a teacher there and coach with Coach Kane and Coach uh, Bedwell. Mm -hmm. But uh, they said, hey, Troy, will you go to Meadowbrook and coach? And I said, if they'll give me a teaching job, I'll go. Mm -hmm. So I, I went to, uh, to Meadowbrook as an assistant. Coach Kane got the Hermitage job. Wow. Um, yeah, and, uh, you know, and I guess I'm still here today, so – Coach K, how, how long were you at, at Bird? Because I didn't even know you was at Bird. I bounced around a lot. I was at Bird for two years. Okay. Yeah, I didn't know that. Wow. Like I said, so when, when Coach said, I was like, Bird? I'm like, man, you know. But um, y'all was over there under Coach Bedwell, so that's, mm -hmm. man. Paul, I was there one year under Paul Kett. Okay. his last year. So that was right. my first year, and then it was Bedwell's first year first my year. second year. Okay. So, so tell, well, Coach Taylor, I'm sorry. So when you went over to Meadowbrook and got the job over there, you was the, the head varsity no, coach? No, sir. They, they just needed assistant coaches. Uh, coach Bowles, who Coach Kane had also coached under okay. before he went to Bird, uh, they needed coaches. And the program was down. And What uh, year was this? I'm sorry. Oh, it was 2001. Okay. okay. Yeah, I was assistant coach there at Meadowbrook from 2001 to 2000. Uh, seven, we lost to Hermitage in the playoffs. Y'all blocked a punt, I think. Y'all blocked a lot of punts. <laughs> and then uh, 2008, I went to Amelia's head coach. And then the next year, I went back to Meadowbrook as the head coach when Coach Bowles retired. So I was there from 2009 to 2014 as head coach. And I coached a lot of games against Coach. And then uh, I felt like it was time for a change. So I went to Virginia Union for three years as assistant coach for Mark James in Fort Lauderdale, Florida. Mm. And, uh, you know, Coach Bedwell got in, uh, to be the AD, and they brought me back to Bird. So I'm going my fifth year at Bird. But one thing I want to say about Coach Kane is, is not only is he a great coach and a great man, but um, his dad – was a goat. His dad was a legend. He he was a legendary coach at Meadowbrook, wrestling coach. And uh, when I went to Meadowbrook, my first year teaching, Coach Kane, the other coach Kane, his dad um, had just retired, and he was still subbing. But you know, I can remember they gave me a mentor, and he told me about Coach Kane's dad and how good of a man he was, mm -hmm. and how good of a coach, and how he cared about his players, and even. Uh, uh, his dad, this is how hard of a working man he was. He actually started a chimney cleaning business to put him and his wow. uh, My sister. you know, sisters through college. So, like, this not is just a Hall of Fame coach, but his dad was a Hall of Fame coach. So, you know, I'm... And this is one of my mentors right here. You know, he tried to get me to come to Hermitage many times to be an assistant coach. I mean, but, uh, you know... I, just, I, just, I love him. You know, he, he's, like, he's like a big brother he, he, to me. Mm. And uh, he's, just, he, he's just a great man and a great coach. He's a legend. Oh, definitely. He's a legend. Mm -hmm. I mean, you think about, you know, when you talk about the central region around here and all the teams with the Bird, um, Hermitage, and, you know, all the uh, Highland Springs and the Varanas. I mean, you know, it was always right there. I mean, Hermitage at one time, you guys was dominating around here for, for a long time. And it was just like, man, it was always getting there. And again, you know, for me as a fan, that's the reason why I started this podcast because it's just like I paid my five, ten, eight dollars to go to the game and to have you guys in here today. <laughs> you know, this is me giving back to you guys because when I left the game, I felt like, wow, that was worth my money. Well, you got your money's worth. Yeah. So you know, so I'm like, wow. But Coach Kane, you was a wrestler. How did you transition from? Wrestling, which one did you like more, wrestling or football? Um, uh, football was more – wrestling was an individual. Okay. So I appreciate the team aspect that when you won, you celebrated with others. Mm -hmm. um, so that's why I kind of stuck with football, but I did both all through high school. Okay. Um, 
And then uh, in college, I decided just to focus on football. I, went to, I was Division three. Okay. And I was the kind of guy that paid to play. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, you know how that is. So I went to Hampton City and played football there for four years. And okay. then uh, went back to my alma mater, Clover Hill, as a JV coach for seven years and bounced around until I got uh, the right opportunity at Hermitage. Okay, so yeah, you Dominion District. Oh, you say. oh yeah. That's, back when I, when I played, Dominion District had eleven teams. Really? Yeah, that was back at Double A ball. Okay, and it was Double A except for a couple of big boys, Monica, and a couple couple of schools around here with Triple A. But we had eleven. Good went from Vrina, Goblin, all the way down south side, Clover Hill, all in one big district. Wow! See, I see see, see the education now, y'all, because I I didn't know that. So now I'm, I'm learning something because I did not know that, and I remember you know when I came along in like late 80s and the 90s Clover Hill was known for their running backs they was always had running back you you know them and Bird so it was like the D- Dominion District always had Huguenot running the football so it was the, kind of the big thing you know but um, Coach Taylor at, going back to when you was at Meadowbrook um, you were around on that state championship team uh, was it 2003? 2004 2004 yeah, because I was like, Hopewell won one year, and you guys won the year. Mm-hmm. Give us a little bit, you know, what were you doing at that time What, uh, as, as far as a position coach? Uh, yeah, I, I was Coach Bowles' uh, assistant, and, you know, Coach Bill Bowles, he, he – if anybody knows the wing tee better than him, offense in Virginia, I like to meet him. Um, you know, and just an old-school football coach like a Bear Bryant. You know, we had some long practices. Okay. And they were tough, and they were physical. You know, Coach – Oh, yes, sir. You know, so – you know, he, he just – you know, I came from Bird, and, and I knew that style of football from playing at Bird and playing for Coach Bland as offensive lineman and then going over to Coach Bowles. Mm-hmm. You know, I, I learned a different style of football. And, um, you know, I was lucky enough to be the JV co- assistant coach there for one year. Then Coach Bowles moved me up to varsity, and they had a great feeder program there mm-hmm. um, with the Hopkins Bobcats. And we got a great group of kids, and they finally st- stuck together. Mm-hmm. And th- those kids, you know, and my, our, my fourth year there as assistant, and those kids a senior year, we got a chance, you know, to play the Hampton Crabbers and Tyrod Taylor and, oh. and legendary Coach Smith. Yep. And, and we were lucky enough to pull that out. That was an amazing game. And then we played North Stafford, who we actually scrimmaged uh, the first scrimmage that year. So, yeah, I was, I was just the – let's see. Um, I, I had a, uh, applied – to be the head coach at Atlee and Monica and interviewed, but I didn't have head coaching experience mm-hmm. and uh, I didn't get the jobs and that was good. But uh, I stayed at Meadowbrook, you know, and, and I was just, I, I knew the line, but Coach Bowles said to be a head coach, I needed to learn the back. So he made me the quarterback coach. Okay. So I coached the defensive ends, John Graves. He's a good guy to coach. Um, he went to the NFL. NFL. And he's a strength coach at Mississippi State. Uh, so yeah, it was just a fun time. You know, as I, I tell the – I had Hollis Springs basketball coaches in here this mm-hmm. weekend. Uh, coach Tennyson, uh, he coached under um, uh, Coach Lancaster. And I asked him this question, and I'm going to ask it to you. How does it feel to get the job at your alma mater? What I, and what I, the reason why I asked that question is because me traveling a lot throughout the state, you go down to 757, as I told you earlier, and you go up to North Virginia. A lot of those coaches, basketball and football, they always have their alumni to come back there and coach mm-hmm. the teams. And for a long time here, I never saw that, at least not on the basketball side. Mm-hmm. On football side, I didn't really know too much about that because you got so many different coaches. But I felt like that now since I know – a lot of things has happened as far as like the the, the transformation of the from AAA double A to now this five A. I don't even know what it is now, but um, how does it make you feel to get that job at your alma mater? Does it like mean more than any other job, or it's just the, the job is the job? Because I can tell like some people are like, man, I'm like my alma mater. I, I, I'm I'm kind of more happy than just say, man, I was trying to get my feet in the door in this particular opportunity. Mm-hmm. Does that kind of make sense? Yes, I'm sir. Uh, you know, anybody that knows me knows how I feel about Bird. And, um, you know, growing up right down the street and, and growing up and going to games all the time and watching them play Dale and Coach Schrotenborough, who was from uh, Alpena, Michigan, you know, bringing the Michigan wings mm-hmm. to Bird. I grew up going to games, and my dad took me to games, all different types of games. But uh, my mom was a cafeteria worker at Bird. And I don't know if you remember her. She died in 2011. Um, yeah, so – um, actually 2010, but 
uh, she always she always wanted me to be a coach, and uh, she wanted me to be the coach at Burr. So it means a lot to me, man. I love it every day, man. You know, and and you got there. Like I said, you've been there five years now. You know, was there any? And I guess it's kind of like a cliche question. Was there any type of pressure because knowing that Bird has this long history of just great, and then you coming behind, you know, um, Coach Bedwell, mm-hmm. and now you coming in establishing your own culture versus when you came in, it was a lot of running, and now it's a lot of the game is different where it's passing and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. Is there any differences in the game, and Coach? Game, you can answer this question as well. Um, How's the game different now than versus when you guys first started coaching? I would just like to say, like, Coach Kane, he, he's kind of revolutionary in, in, in what he did there at Hermitage. I mean, he, I mean, people don't go in the center anymore. I mean, even in the NFL, you see quarterbacks like Tua and uh, Joey Burrow and yeah. these guys, Mac Jones, they really didn't play under the center in, in college. And then when they go and get up underneath there, you know, a lot of times, even in the league, you see fumble snaps. Right. But, you know, the league is the league and it's the NFL and they're going to go into the center and, and run the ball and play action. So, you know, I think the game has changed in that, you know, your best athlete goes to quarterback and, you know, you shotgun snap it to him. Mm-hmm. And it's less footwork uh, to have to teach the quarterback because, you know, you don't have to take a five-step drop now when you're in the gun. But, mm-hmm. you know, his offense that he put in, you know, after a few years being there at Hermitage, you know, mm-hmm. it's still revolutionary today. So he kind of changed the game a little bit with, you know, what he did there at Hermitage. Okay. I guess he answered the question. Huh? Well, yeah, it was kind of funny. Well, when I was a high school baller way back in the uh, early 80s, we ran the wishbone, which most people don't even know what the wishbone is anymore. <laughs> no. And the old Nebraska wishbone. Right. That's what we ran. And then uh, when, I, when I came back after college, I came back to Clover Hill. They were in the I team. So that's pretty much all I had known from my experiences. And then at Hermitage, we started off as an I team. Then we got this cat called, named Jamil Sewell. Mm. <laughs> he had Dwayne Brown, too. Uh, yeah. We scrimmaged them. I, yeah, Dwayne, yeah, sure Dwayne was a beast, yeah. but Jamil was who made good. me think differently. I got this guy with a lot of talent. I got to learn the passing game. Yeah, so he, yeah. his talent forced me to try and learn the passing game. Okay. Uh, and we was still out of an eye, but it was a force to learn the passing game and take advantage of his skill set. And then we expanded from there. And then the next phase came we had Juju Clayton, yep, uh, another I great him. quarterback. Uh, two ACC quarterbacks there. Uh, he had the he was a tough, hard nosed runner. Yeah, he ran like a fullback and threw like a quarterback. Mm-hmm. Um, so we, that's when we started doing a little bit of the Oregon stuff. Mm-hmm. Uh, but it was it was more of a it was more of a read. It wasn't a triple, which we got to at the next level, mm-hmm. uh, where we were just reading defensive end. He'd pull and run, mm-hmm. and teams were get keen on that, and they could they could key on the running back and the quarterback. Mm-hmm. So the next level we developed was. So when the bubble off the triple was the old trip, the old wishbone option pitched it. Yep. Mm-hmm. Well, instead, what we did is we threw it, and what that does is to force the defense to defend from sideline to sideline. Ah. Mm-hmm. Now He's doing the had, RPO. Now, when you had to defend all of that, and you have to worry about all that, we have more lanes to run up the middle where everybody really wants to do. Yep. You stretch them to sideline to sideline, make them cover that, then you open up down the alley. Um, and then we and we used the RPOs when we did that. That was a form of an RPO. Yeah, it is. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then we did RPOs downfield as well. Man, see, that, see, that's the education I'm talking about. Now we get into the real football talk now, man. And see, and, and you mentioned all those athletes that you had over there. And, and it's funny you say that because a lot of times coaches don't adjust. And Coach Tennyson was here from Holly Springs the other day. Was like, man, I had to adjust to my players. And a lot of times you get, I, I felt like that. A lot of the coaches that came, I felt like when we get to the playoffs or the state championship times, it wasn't that these other areas were better than us. I just felt like they was kind of, I want to be nice when I say this, I don't know if it was coaching errors or maybe kind of a little bit stubbornness. And like you said, that you had to kind of like change a little bit from the athletes that you got. Some coaches just want to stick with their system and make that athlete you know, stick to learn that. How do you kind of feel about that? Well, it's funny you say that because when I did the Hermitage interview for mm-hmm. the job and there was a panel of like eight people there, one individual person wanted me to tell them exactly what I was going to do. And I kept trying to explain to them, well, that depends on the athletes that I have and right. what they can do. It's not so much what I want to do, it's what right. they can do. 
And luckily, one person in there understood what I was saying, and the other person, I guess, was outvoted. <laughs> yeah, man. You made a good decision. Well, actually, I wish they wouldn't have hired you. Then I wouldn't have had to coach you. <laughs> <laughs> man, talk about some of these battles that's in the I can area, talk about man. one. He, he taught me a lesson one night, and that was uh, make sure you know the other uh, coach has used all his timeouts before you take a knee. And I will always know that because his wife had already gone to the car. And was oh, yeah. Him out. I still I get on her yeah. to this day. Then he's got the Rashad, Rashad Robinson. Yeah. Went to JMU. And, okay. Yeah, he's a pretty good player. And Phenomenal I figured that player. out. Yeah, I figured that out that night. When we what year was this? I don't know. I'm trying to forget. Um, yeah, because I'm trying to remember. That, 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 no, I, it, was two, it, was, it was 20. <laughs> <laughs> it was about 2012, uh, I believe. Or okay. On that. Uh, later than that, must be, I think it was probably close to 15. No, it, was, it was my last year, I believe, at Meadowbrook because we lost that game, then we lost two more, and they were all like to y'all. I mean, when we was at Meadowbrook, we was playing Hermitage, and then we was yep. playing Highland Springs, Highland Springs, and we was playing Manchester, and all of them went undefeated my last year. And then we had to play well, they Highland all Springs. Go, they didn't all go undefeated. Yeah. Uh, we, we, beat a couple of, we beat a couple in, of In the regular season, I think they all went. Yeah, yeah Herbert just beat a couple of them, man. <laughs> but my last year at Meadowbrook, um, Highland Springs beat us in the playoffs. We were up on them. And uh, it's pretty tough when Greg Dorch is your fourth best, best receiver. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> man. That's a whole different yeah. subject right there. Those Good luck guys stopping him and man free. Man, look, those guys were special. Yeah. I mean, Coach, I remember, and it's crazy, because I know you play, coached against those guys, man. I remember um, – what was that that game? I, I watch it all the time. I want to say it was at Highland Springs, maybe when um, this was maybe I want to say 2013, 2014. I think y'all were down to Highland Springs and y'all came back. I think it was a tied game or something like that. It might have been. I know uh, Dorch and Wallace was on the field, and I'm trying to remember that game, man. But talk about some of these battles that y'all had with Highland Springs and Verona. I mean, it was never a night then when Highland Springs. I mean, Highland Springs and Hermitage played the first game of the season. You had everybody in the city there going to watch some games. Talk about some of those battles, Coach. Well, the best thing about those kind of games when you open them. Mm -hmm. You're thinking about it from your season ends the year before. Right. You're preparing and keeping the guys fired up for the whole entire offseason. It carries through that mm -hmm. for preparation. So that really first game of the year, it really, you know, it's not a season ender, whichever way it goes, mm -hmm. but it's a season maker because the preparation goes throughout the entire offseason knowing that's game one. Right. Mm -hmm. So set your mentality your straight, your, your mentality of the offseason training to be prepared to play against a great program mm -hmm. your first game of the year. Man, you know, because that, that was like you circled that and it was like, man, you know, Hermes playing Hollis Springs. Either it's going to be over there or be over there, man. I'm just like – and you're talking about the athletes that's on the field, man. Like I said, you coach, like you said, Dwayne uh, Brown. You had Juju uh, Clayton uh, – Sue. Riddick, yeah, Jimos. Uh, Riddick. Uh, the, I mean, national he, champion, yeah. captain, national championship. Uh, Fontel Mines. Fontel Mines. He's now the wide receiver coach of Virginia Tech, by yeah. the way. He's pretty good. <laughs> Curtis Grant wasn't too shabby. Yeah. I remember Curtis Grant's freshman year. Yeah. <laughs> I saw him. Yeah. You don't I, forget that. Well, you saw him his freshman year. What did he look like? He looked like a grown man then? Or he, looked like he looked just like when he played for the Chargers, I think. Uh, I mean, I, I think the first time we played y'all, he might have played JV. Then we played y'all in the playoffs. His I'll first this. game on varsity was his freshman year. Uh, our linebacker was – or starting the linebacker was hurt, and we were playing Highland Springs in the playoffs, and that was his first game. And we had – and the number – he had somebody else's number. And so the announcer couldn't figure out who his number 14 was and making all these plays on the field. And he was a freshman linebacker. First start was Holland Springs in the playoffs. Wow. Did y'all win that game? Yes, sir. Oh, man. Well, I should have known that because y'all was, was running the table for a while. Th those battles with the Holland Springs were just classic, man. And it's just like, you know, at, at during the t late 2009s and 2010s, man, we're just classic, and I'm just sitting up here. I'm thinking of, like, in my head, like, right now, I wish I could just, like, have a, a screen where people can kind of see what I'm talking about. But, um, yeah, but. Yeah, but I mean, the job that Lauren Johnson has done, uh, you know, at, at Highland Springs has been amazing. And, and also, you know, Coach Lewis coming over there and taking over that program and winning the state championship. You know, everybody knows, you know, that's the East End, and that's where – you know, the championship runs through. So, you know, my hat's off to those guys and, and that community and the football players that they build. Man. A lot of respect to those guys. No, big respect to them because, like I said, it, it was like – I felt like that Coach Johnson had to go through this thing to beat you for a while. Like, you was beating him all the time. 
And then I guess he finally got over that hump, and it's like once he got over the hump, then he went on his run. Well, well, I would say our program maybe. Well, well, well got, okay. Got a little bit ahead of, yeah. ahead of his program for a while, and then they called and they took they, off. And they took off, yeah. But like I said, you but for the two thousands, you pretty much ran that. What do? Let me ask you a question about this 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 triple A thing. Like, I guess I want to get it from a coach's standpoint because I hear it from the players. Do y'all like the old the system now that's in place, or do you kind of like the old system that was in place where everybody was grouped in yeah. together, or versus like now everything is ver- break down by classification? I want to hear from a coach's standpoint. Well, the old the old one wasn't accurate. <laughs> okay. Well, it, okay. Because the way it used to be on the old system, uh, when we had Curtis Grant, we played against a school in the, for the state championship that had a thousand more students. Oh uh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, but we were still the same level because they broke it up by within a region. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. They divided within that region your group size as opposed to the whole entire state. So if if my AAA or Division Six in the Central Region, the highest school was two thousand. Mm-hmm. That was the highest. Mm-hmm. Well, in Northern Virginia, the highest was four thousand. Four thousand, yeah. So you were playing them in the playoffs because you did it by region, as opposed to the entire state, and then divide. So I, I think this system currently is much more accurate uh, to have people playing all the same size levels. And, and I like to add, I mean, heck, I mean, my, my first year back at Meadowbrook, we went nine and one, and lost one game by one point, and didn't make the playoffs. Didn't make the playoffs, yeah, then, right? Yeah, my third year, we did the same thing again. So I mean, but we knew what was on, at stake, and we knew we had to beat Thomas Dale. I mean, heck. If there's a more talented school, uh, you know, them and Oscar Smith, I mean, heck, that's they're just loaded every year. And, yeah, I mean, we knew we had to beat them, and we didn't. So, you know, we sat at home 9-1. and one. I mean, we were the last state in uh, the union that had 9-1 and one teams not making the playoffs. Yeah. So, yeah, I'm glad they changed that. Well, Bill yeah. Sewell's junior year <laughs> were 9-1, and one, didn't make the playoffs. Yeah. And see, people – and see, the, a lot of the coaches hated that. I remember one year when Monikin lost to Bird. Yeah. And, Mon- yeah, and the Monikin coach quit. He, 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 went, he went on the – I was like, man, this is a messed up system. How my kids are, are going to be nine and one and not make the playoffs? It was always Verona, Hollis Springs. They were nine and zero going to that yeah, game. Whoever lost, somebody was going home. It was the first round of the playoffs. Yeah, like, yeah, yep. The first round of the playoffs. So it's like, but a lot of, I guess, from a fan perspective, we hate the system because it's not as competitive What's as that, it you was. Hate? Well, just because of the fact that all the teams were grouped in there as one. So I guess from a from a from a bragging standpoint, it's feel like that. Okay, well, if I beat Hermitage, Highland Springs, Verona, like say for instance, like a school like Phoebus, yeah, Phoebus, I think they won like nine, something like that, eight to nine championships. And I guess from they saying that okay, well, we beat the best, but the way that it is now, you got teams that are five and six making the playoffs now, mm-hmm. which yeah, but they're not making, they're not advancing. Right, right, but I, I guess it's like. From I guess you know how I guess I should say that we you kind of used to something that's always been in place and it was always the the way mm-hmm. and now like it's it seemed like it's more watered down I should say mm-hmm. if I'm saying that correctly but you're right coach it is accurate because you don't want to be trying to be a three A school that has a total of maybe twelve hundred kids mm-hmm. and you plan against a school that got four thousand kids because they can go out here and, and pick through more mm-hmm. and have more of a, 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 a an advantage. Yeah. So, you know, but that happens, but we've seen where Thomas Dale beat Oscar Smith that year when Oscar Smith had Phillip Sims. They were what same classification, but mm-hmm. I would say Oscar Smith probably had more kids than what Thomas Dale had. But then you can say that year, well, it rained. When they and played in the monsoon. Then the monsoon. And Oscar Smith said if it was rain, if it was sunny that day, we would have won by forty. Yeah. Shout out to seven five seven, but you know, I didn't go. You know, but I, you, much respect to the seven five seven and to Coach Smith and Coach Bill D and Tommy yep. Reeman and those legends down there. Cadillac. Yeah, I mean, yeah. yeah, it's it's amazing the football that that's played down there, but it's all love because it's all VA and you know. But they don't look at it like that though, Coach. You know, I mean, it, they look at good. it as we're seven five Everybody's seven. Competitive. We're better than everybody else. I mean, if anybody's and, lining up to go down there and play Oscar Smith, I mean, we scrimmaged them. Uh, then when he scrimmaged them, yeah, they scrimmaged I mean, yeah, them. Not a lot well. of people want to go down there and play those guys. They don't I mean, want to play. Come them. out, they like creature. And they got them ten deep. 
So yeah, yeah but they, but you know they look at it as we beat everybody. <laughs> I'm just telling you just what I deal with. Yeah. It's like they like they look at it as their own separate entity. It's all good. Seven man. five seven. Oh, well, man. it, they it is. Curry, they got Allen Iverson. They got Lawrence Taylor. I mean, they they got some yeah, Bruce yeah, we, Smith. Yeah. Well, we got some players up here too. I mean, we don't. They may not maybe as legendary as their players, but we have some players up here. But it's mm-hmm. just the fact that they just kind of look at it as like we're seven five seven. And yeah. we're just kind of like y'all, just rest of the state. Now, yeah. Since the new classifications, mm-hmm. I want to say since 2010, you guys lost to uh, to Battlefield, and then I want to say 2011, 2012, 13, 14 was Bird. Then Highland Springs went yeah. four after that, and then now and so forth Morning, and so forth. Stonebridge and um, yeah, I think they won. Stonebridge Bird won, won a four couple. in a row. Springs won three in a row. Won, won three in a so row. Seven straight in a row. Bird won yep. three. Yeah, Bird won three, three and four. Then three and four. four. Yeah. Yeah, but I mean, to me, the seven five seven were the ones that paved they, the way. They paved the way, right? It was coaches like Coach Bedwell and Coach Kane and Coach mm-hmm. Lauren Johnson that really they um, changed the game. Know, yeah, it, it elevated the the football, and because of the coaching, the coaching and the programs and the players have improved. You know, over okay, the years. that was about to be my so, next yeah. question. I mean, since, since Allen Iverson and Ronald Curry and those guys, those and, guys, and Bill D was the head coach of Phoebus, the football in the 804 has gotten better. You, yeah, the numbers don't lie. So, you know, no, seven, I five, seven, my, we I take my hat off to them and what they've done. Oh, I give them right, but they, they, I, I'm just telling you, just from a fan, mm-hmm. they, they don't. It's like, no, we're, we're seven, five, it's seven, especially yeah. like you go back to when Patrick Henry had that team in '94 with Daniel, Derek Cott, yeah. and yeah. Aaron Kennedy, and those boys, Damian and, and Woody, Damian Woody. You know, and that stuff get overlooked. Nobody talks about that. <laughs> All they talk about is, hey, Hampton, we ran off. And I think Hampton beat that team, too. I think the next yeah. year or something like that. Yeah. Oh, did they? Well, Mike Smith's got 12 state championships and 500 wins. Yeah, so it's uh, kind of hard to kind of top that round here, you know. But, yeah, I just had to kind of ask you. Yeah, 757 all love to me. Yeah, it's we, all we love. Used to always go down there to play seven on seven. Mm-hmm. For that pure competition standpoint, uh, so when you see them in the playoffs, you're used to it. Yeah, and, yeah, and we would try and scrimmage as many times we get them to scrimmage. We would go down there and for scrimmages. Oh, really? Okay, okay. Because you know, while we hear we're seven five seven, we can't be beat. You know, <laughs> now they ain't saying much of anything now. Right. Yeah, they got Maury, they got Hasa Smith, but Hollis Springs beat them. So it's like, okay, all right, you know, but um. Coach K, I was going to ask you. Uh, I know since you left, Hermitage kind of went down a little bit. Well, um, were you happy or excited to see them back in the playoffs last year? Um, oh, extremely! I'm mean, happy for the coaching staff because a lot of them, are, some, a lot of my guys there. Uh, the head coach Tim Jean Pierre uh, was my was a senior in 2001, my first year there. Okay, okay. Uh, he was a senior, so he'd been there when. To the Rust Bells because they averaged two and eight for eight years before we got there. Mm-hmm. Uh, so they never they never won more than three games in a season. Wow! And then his senior year we went seven and two. Mm-hmm. Um, and then uh, he went off to college, played college ball. Guys agree. Got him back at Hermitage, uh, teaching and coaching uh, when I was there. And then I'm very excited that he t- turned the program back around last year, and he's got a bunch of Herm guys running. And as you were alluding to before. Uh, our staff was as it evolved over the 17 years. Probably after five or six years, we were predominantly Hermitage people yep. coaching staff, except for myself. Okay. And the joke was when I introduced my staff, I'd say all Hermitage grads stand up to the parent night, and myself and Coach Moore were the ones that weren't. I said, "Well, Coach Moore is smart enough to marry one because he's right with the Hermitage grad." <laughs> so I was the only one that wasn't in the room. Man, see, that's what I'm talking about, man. You know, I, I love that that now everybody's starting to come back and be coaches, man, because to me it means more a lot. I talked to Coach Lewis when he came on. Uh, he had Jonathan Lewis and mm-hmm. those guys on the staff. He said most of those guys were Verona guys. Same thing with Highland Springs. They're Highland Springs guys. They know, they know the culture. Even when I talked to Coach Tennyson, he talked about I want my guys on the staff because they know how Highland Springs is. We know what to expect, and it's kind of, you know, you don't want to say that you want to bring the outsider in, but when I want to sell the, the school and that's a standard that need to be set, you kind of say, hey, I went here. It's about Panther pride. It's about Springer pride and so forth and so forth. Mm-hmm. So I love that. I love that because now it's, I'm starting to see the difference and the coaching is different. 
um, you know, where a lot of times you had a, a older coach that was been here for like 30, 40 years and it was just their way. And, you know, we've seen that. So I like the evolution where the game is going today. I think it gives automatic ownership. Yep. Yep. So, yeah. So, yeah, but um, – Let's 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 speed up to what's going on now, Coach Taylor. You got start off with James River, man. Um, like I said, I don't even know what these these teams are now. I want to say Dominion District. I don't even know if they call it that anymore. What is it, Class Five? Yeah, we call it Dominion District still. <laughs> yeah, we're old school. Yeah, but um, uh, what are, what are your expectations this year for LC Bird, man? Like you know. I don't know any of the good teams anymore because I know it's you, Manchester. Well, it's the same teams. Manchester. Yeah, it always is. Who's the team to beat this year? I mean, it's still running through the East End and Manchester. And, uh, I mean, there's so many great programs. I mean, it's the same teams to me. You're being humble now. You could no, say I'm no. not. I mean, I, <laughs> yeah, we, we're 0 0 right now, and we're only as good as our last game, and mm -hmm. we're just trying to get better. I was just trying to get it. I was trying to get it out. You, you know, I mean, there ain't nothing really to get. You know, <laughs> yeah. Look, look, play the next bit. play. <laughs> look, I, I, I get it, yo. Know. But um, yeah, you talking about um, the, these these two teams over there in the East End, man. And shout out to Coach Johnson and Coach Lewis, man. They've done a ph phenomenal job. Uh, Patrick Henry, I've seen. They've yeah. been very competitive too. Um, I would like to see them get back. I'm kind of an old school guy. I like to see the old school teams, Patrick Henry, the Hermitages. Uh, I said Hermitage, ding, ding. Uh, Hermitage, um, you know, some of the schools like that, he would not even get them back where they used to be in Meadowbrook and Hopewell. I, I'm just yeah. from the old school. Mm -hmm. Then the playoffs come and you start to battle some of those teams from Northern Virginia and stuff like that. What do y'all think about the state of – football of this uh, central region now because we could talk about those two teams what about everybody else how do y'all feel about our region as a whole compared to uh the other regions i should say i ain't gonna keep focusing on 757 <laughs> i mean I, you, oh it's in terms of competition competition I, I i'm sorry no question we're there we're there if not above them all i think the northern region has uh, a little bit of an advantage. Um, what most people don't realize is many of those coaches over there have pretty good situations where they can be either the AD, they call it assistant AD, they call it uh, assistant to the assistant principal, mm -hmm. but they're not teaching in a classroom and coaching. Mm -hmm. He was a math teacher. I mean, he, I mean, he wore a tie in the classroom. He <laughs> taught five classes a day. Of what subject? Math. Uh, anywhere from algebra to algebra two. Okay, I can't even spell algebra. Man, that's – oh, man. So they, so they have a little bit of an advantage, especially when it comes down to the playoff and you're crunching, you're trying to get in that extra film that it's extra uh, study time in. And the only time you have to do it as a math teacher, football coach, is the weekends and the nights when you're getting – after home, you can get home at 7.30 after practice. Mm -hmm. but these guys have their daytime mm -hmm. to do their preparation and work and break film down and do the little extra things and deal with the extra media and then deal with the recruiters are coming through and all that kind of stuff. So the Northern Virginians have got a little advantage there because they make yeah. they have a little extra money in those buildings right. that can allow those people to do that. They value them more resources. Number one yeah. in the North uh, to put them in that position because though they know the, all that brings to the school and the student body and the feel uh, for the community, there's mm -hmm. value to that. So they invest in that. So there's a little advantage they have over the entire state. You know, and I'm glad you say that because that was that was I, I'm glad that you, you mentioned that. When you, like you said, you know those areas have resources, more resources than we have. When you talk about the terms of recruiting, and you can correct me if I'm wrong, both of you, mm -hmm. there was a time that, again, the central region, I felt like that there was not enough coaches coming through here. Mm -hmm. They will go to Northern Virginia, they will go out west, and then they will go around 804 and go to 757. Mm -hmm. Was Did y'all... Were y'all part of that era? And, how, and if you remember, how did that make you guys feel? Well, when I was at Hermitage in 2001, we didn't have that problem. Okay. I had the luxury of getting there with Dwayne Brown and Fontel Mont. Okay. So they were, so they were gonna, they were gonna come there. Mm -hmm. And then the, the important thing is when they came the first time, yeah. I believe we developed an an honest reputation of being very straightforward with them and not trying to sell them a guy who is gonna have a hard time uh, starting for me. Uh, and being one of their recruits. Mm -hmm. They knew when they came by school, they are going to get the transcript. Mm -hmm. And then back then, they were going to get a stack of uh, CDs with all the game films they wanted, VHS. ready to go. 
so they could, so they could take it with them. So so we developed a reputation of a of being honest, b of having good players, and c of being prepared. So they would constantly come through. So we're not wasting their time because yeah. they got to go to a lot of places. Right. And then at the same time, when they come through here, you can say they'd always ask, "Hey, coach, what do you think about so and so at another school, or is there somebody I'm missing?" Okay. And we would always give them an honest opinion mm-hmm. there. Like, hey, there's somebody over there that's been giving us a fit over there at Meadowbrook. You might want to go check them out. Yeah, yeah, I mean, that's a good point he made. And a lot of times it could be a coach at another school mm-hmm. that tells a coach about a player because, you know. I didn't know how true that was. Oh, man. I mean, every, everybody always asks who's got a guy. And, I mean, when I mean you see Dwayne Brown come out there or John Graves or Morgan Moses as a freshman, I mean, right. come on. I mean, you can't coach that. And, uh, yeah, I mean, everybody asks everybody. That's why it's so important that you know we, we preach to our players, make good grades, be a good person. You know, if another coach from another school signs off on you, you know, the college coach, if Coach Kane recommends somebody, they're going to take that to the bank. Mm-hmm. And the thing about the 804 kids that I think gives us an advantage over some places is we have athletes, we have size, we have guys that can run, mm-hmm. but they also got great – high school coaches Mm -hmm. okay in this area and they come from great high school programs Mm -hmm. and those programs are tough you know places like benedictine places like hermitage places like dinwiddie right uh, places like monica places like verina highland springs manchester if you can make it through those programs you could be successful in the next level so i I think that kind of gives our guys an advantage because there's other areas of virginia where the grades might be questionable Mm -hmm. but when they come here if the kids got the transcript and he's made it through those programs it's like what coach urban meyer said it, it if a, a state championship coach and and you're the captain of the team and you're the player and he says take this guy, mm-hmm. I mean he's going to take this guy. I mean that. I mean this is Virginia and you know our, our guys they don't have to go to Alabama to get an education right and they don't have to go to Alabama or Ohio State to play in the NFL. I mean they can go to UVA or Virginia Tech or wherever and if they're good enough they're going to find them and I'm a Virginia guy and I'm biased and I like to see kids stay and play in Virginia. And that was my I was going to go that was my next question. How do you guys see the way that now with the changes at Virginia Tech and UVA? I love to see the state guys stay in state because we be able to see the yeah. parents be able to see them and exactly. we can follow them like, like it used to be. But I think we did get away from that at one time where it was rumors where a lot of the coaches, well, Virginia Tech was getting a lot of the guys. I know you was getting a lot of guys that was going to Tech and UVA, but a lot other outside of you, uh, Coach Kane, uh, there's a hermitage, there was a lot, uh, you were rarely hear about a lot of guys staying in state. Um, why is that? You know? Uh, I feel it's it's a it's a personal connection, mm-hmm. and you can talk all you want about this and that, but the athlete wants to feel connected and somehow to who's being recruited them. Mm-hmm. So that's number one. If there's no connection, I don't I don't think it matters where the school is. So you got to have, you got to make a personal connection with the athlete. That's one thing that Coach Beamer's program did a lot very well. Mm-hmm. They made a great effort to connect with the high school coaches okay, mm-hmm. and then also connect with the athletes that way. Um, you get some of these programs that will come in and they'll try to not necessarily connect with the coach at all mm-hmm. and go straight to the athlete. Mm-hmm. Um, and that, that's going to be a more of a difficult situation. I was very blessed my first year. Like I said, we had Dwayne and Fontel mm-hmm. and um, – one pick tech and one pick UVA, mm. so I didn't have nobody could say I was at this school or that school. school. Right, you hit they it. Both made their own choices, and they're best friends, and they just pick different places. Um, so that made it easier for for the buy-in from the coaches to know that I'm not pushing the kid one way or the other. Mm. I'm just my I say my job was to get the buffet table and the choice of the kid and his mm-hmm. family to pick, mm-hmm. uh, not to push them one direction or the other. And if you develop that kind of reputation, the schools feel they have an honest chance when they come to your school mm-hmm. to get the athletes. And what that really helps you at is not the Dwayne's and the and the Fontels. It's the it's the borderline guy. Mm-hmm. Is he gonna make it? Is he gonna be my guy? Now they're gonna trust you and believe you, and it gets them over the edge. Yeah, we'll take a chance on this kid. Mm. Coach, you want? Well, I mean, I, I just tell you a story about Morgan Moses. I mean, Mo signed with UVA twice. Once out of high school and then once at Fork Union. And the second time, uh, he's sitting there with his mom. It's a snow day, and he, it was signing day. He had an NLI from LSU and Ohio State and UVA there. And, and Mo knows this. I mean, he had Jim Trussell on the phone. He had Les Miles on the phone, and he had UVA right there. And, you know, his uncle was, was a big UVA supporter, and his mom and them, they wanted to see him play. Mm-hmm. And 
I mean, come on, if you're Morgan Moses, you have to duck down to get through yeah. that door. I mean, if you can play, you can play. And, you know, Mo, with a little bit of, uh, you know, I don't know, nudging, he signed with UVA. And I'm proud of him and what he's done in the NFL. Yeah. And now he's a starting left tackle for the Baltimore Ravens, Ravens blocking for man. Lamar Jackson. And I'm a Ravens fan now because of that. Man, talk about that look. That that guy, man, I had Jonathan Lewis come in here. And Jonathan Lewis, I had even Aaron Brooks when he came in here. Those guys were mm-hmm. like ducking down. I was like, Yeah, they're huge people. Man, yeah, the, the football and basketball players are a whole lot different. Talk about some of the guys that you guys seen. Like, who was like one of the best guys that y'all seen opposite of who y'all coached? Like, who were some of the guys that y'all coached against? I mean, Tyrod Taylor, I mean, he was special. I mean, uh, on the last play of the game, I mean, he, we're in like two man and he, he scrambles to the right. And he's a sophomore. And he throws it back to the left on a guy like run the wheel route or something. Somebody came off coverage and and they lost. And he was the first guy over to shake our hands. So I was like, wow, that was impressive, man. I mean, he he was a winner. And, you wow. know, he's still, you know, in the NFL. He might be starting yep. for the Giants this well, year. So Tyrod Taylor, yeah. a great family from a great program. The Hampton Crabbers, great head coach. Um, he's one of the guys that stick out for me, Coach. How about you, Coach? I remember Ryan had a pretty good, good quarterback yeah, one year. I remember that, him too. Uh, maybe went to Penn State. and <laughs> He ended our season at Bird. <laughs> and had a good run with the 49ers. <laughs> Yeah, I think that guy got his own street name, huh? Yeah, that dude's doing pretty well for himself. Had an amazing career. But yeah, shout out to Mike Robb and everything he does for that community over there on the East End, man. He's a legend. He's a goat. You know, it was my first year coaching. Your last I was year at, bird. Uh, last year, Bird. He, yeah. yeah, we went over Verona yeah. and mm-hmm. he, he ran up down the field. He ended our season. Man. <laughs> he was yeah. bigger and faster than anybody we had, man. He, he's legit. Man, I Shout out to Coach Chilcoat and, you know, rest in peace and the job that he did over there. You know, he helped a lot of kids. Yes. You know, he, he made men and he built that program up and now Coach Lewis and everything he's doing and Stu Brown did, you know, there's a lot of history over there. I went over there the other day, man, and brought, brought me to tears thinking about all the memories I got over there playing at that place. Man, I remember the the, the games. I remember uh, going to the Verina, Highland Springs games. I remember the Verina uh, state championship game when they went against C.D. Hilton those couple of years. Mm-hmm. Ahmad Brooks. Yeah. At old yeah. U of R Stadium. Bill yeah. Brown. Yeah, he's yeah. pretty good. Ahmad Brooks is pretty good. Yeah, he was really, he was really good. Number one pick, first round pick. That's what a linebacker looks like. That guy was like a, Curtis Grant. That was a man. Yeah, exactly. Maybe bigger. Exactly. I was like, man, I met his dad, uh, Percy uh, uh, Perry Brooks. I think his mm-hmm. name before he passed away, man. And because my cousin played at UVA, uh, Keenan Carter. Like and I was able to coach of William Mary. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Was he from Northern Virginia? Yeah, Potomac. Potomac, right on. Yeah. Yeah, him and Amal were best friends. And I was just like, man, that guy was a man. And then it was it was just like I remember his brother was with the West Virginia. He had a brother that played tight end. I didn't and, know that. Yeah, his brother was bigger than he was. But he got into a lot of trouble. So he was just there trying to support Amal to keep Amal mm-hmm. on the right track and stuff like that. So so yeah. I remember uh, seeing my my. I will, if you ask me, I would say Allen Iverson. Yeah, I remember watching him. At, we talked about this. Yeah, at, at the Arthur Ashe. At the Arthur Ashe Center down the basketball court, and I Ubby saw Fields. him against. Been months before when I saw him play against Huguenot. He stood out. Yeah. Yeah, they retired his jersey tomorrow. Oh wow, man! Yeah. What a legend AI is, man. Yeah. What a legend. Yeah, that guy watched him on the football field. To like Huguenot was down sixteen. No, Huguenot was up sixteen nothing in the fourth quarter, and they came back. To wow! Beat. And he just like took over the game. So for me, and then I saw uh, Daniel Derricott with that Patrick Henry team, mm-hmm. and then uh, Ronald Curry. Uh, yeah, he was pretty good too. Yeah, he was. Really I think he got four state championships. Yeah, and he played free safety twenty yards deep and never had to move because nothing, nothing ever got through the box. Oh, yeah. Aaron, did you say Aaron Kenny that played for? Yeah, Aaron yeah, Kenny. Just, yeah, it was tight end. You know, yeah. Earl Kenny was his his older brother was on my staff the whole time. So really? Years. Yeah. Wow. He's still coach Kenny's still coaching the Hermans right now. He's helping out the, the really the new. He was group. head coach too that one year. That's right. Mm-hmm. That's right. Man, mm-hmm. see, that's just like I said, a lot of stuff that I don't even know, like. And that's why I say it's just good to kind of have our coaches in this area, man, because, you know, these guys played. And like you say, a lot of these younger kids, they don't really know. You don't know. That's why I say when you name Morgan Moses and a lot of guys that we had in NFL, we had some guys that go. And like now you're seeing uh, 
uh, Makai Becton and mm-hmm. all of those guys now. And what's the, um, the guys at Bird? Um, yeah, Anthony Jaylen, Harris. Anthony Harris and Jalen Elliott. The guys from Holland Springs. Yeah, you know, it's good to, to see that, man, because like I told you, I'm a I'm an 804 guy, mm-hmm. but I battle with those guys at 757. But you know those Northern Virginia guys, they, they're they pretty good too. Yes, and, 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 and a lot of times we forget them with the guys they had. But I'm going to tell you, who was probably my favorite bird guy. And the reason why I say that was my favorite because what he did in the playoffs alone was just remarkable. Mm-hmm. Remember Paul? Yeah, Paul Robertson. He played defensive end his junior year. Yeah. <laughs> then he was the tailback. Yeah, he, he was good. He was real good. Yeah. <laughs> he had a good offensive line. That was the nastiest offensive line in bird history. That's coming from Matt Bland, who's been there since like 1984. <laughs> Yeah, Paul was the real deal, man. He went to Hampton University. Yeah. Can can you imagine? Didn't he run for like 1,300 yards in the playoffs or something like that? He had a that? career against Oakton. Oakton, yeah. like yeah, I, It was like 400 and some yards that game. Mm-hmm. Well, you know, one thing I would like to know is like how many of those kids that was from the 804 went and watched the Washington Redskins practice at the Science Museum? And how many of them did they get to see? A pro football team, and they were like, "Wow, man! Like that, like that could be life changing." I like to know, like, from those kids, how many of them actually got to go and see that? You know, and how motivating that was, right? And see, that's the thing when you when you mentioned that because we don't have that around here. You can Northern Virginia, they can go up there mm-hmm. to see that, and yeah, it, in seventy five, they the same thing. They can go out and have guys come back and say, "Hey, I hear this person, this person," and it motivates them. Mm-hmm. And I think that's what we kind of lacked around here. And and I don't know if it was the AAU football coaching. A lot of stuff changed now. So um, I'm I'm just glad that that area is back where it needs to be. But I still want to see the Hermitage. I want to see Bird get back, you know, to where yes, you sir. guys were. Because going over to Chester, Thomas, the Thomas Dale and Bird rivalries, man. Those were – you talking about, you know, the, the, the beginning of the year, that first or second game – Going to either Dale or Bird, and that was going to determine who was going to go to, to the playoffs. You already knew, what, you know, what was going to do. So whoever won that game was going to the playoffs. Mm-hmm. I, I missed that, man. So I can't wait to to see those type of rivalries back. The thing about Bird and Dale now is they both got alumni as their head coaches. Oh, really? Well, I know one that's sitting right here, but mm-hmm. I didn't know the, the yeah, Dale Tucker. coach. Yeah. Really? He's a Hampton Sydney grad, too. Kevin's great. Great coach and great person. Yeah, you know somebody. Matter of fact, I told you told me that you told me that. I already said somebody else told me that that um that he was like a really really good guy. And matter of fact, I think I talked to uh, not I, I didn't talk to him, but I saw on an interview with Matt Hatfield. Mm-hmm. He was interviewing Dinwiddie coach coach um, Billy Mills. Billy Mills, and he was talking about they were trying to build the relationships back up um, between and, Dale and Dinwiddie. It, yeah, I remember they were saying something like build that. the relation back up. I mean, I'm I, mean I don't think they say the name of the school. Look, in, in Dinwiddie, I don't think they even. Yeah, that's a big. But Dinwiddie rivalry. was pretty good too. Now, oh yeah, they are pretty good. Yeah, they're yeah. a machine. Yeah, so you know, Coach Mills runs a great program. Yeah, he's been there a long time. Their offense is about like uh, mid-season form right now. We had to go against those guys. How mm-hmm. did that work? They out? got a pretty good player. Yeah, because their quarterback he looks like Michael Vick. Yeah, they say the quarterback he, he was like I think he was a running back at first, right? As a freshman, he started. Yeah, every game for Dinwiddie. Yeah, yeah, he's pretty good. Yeah, well, like I say, this is going to be some interesting, you know, Friday night lights. So yeah, so you guys starting off tomorrow. Um, I know when this be air, it's going to be different. But you guys start mm-hmm, yeah. up tomorrow, zero zero against James River. I'm expecting, you know, it's going to be a packed house, Chester. Going to be at James River, Chester mm-hmm, Field. Yeah, it's it's going to be, be in yeah, Midlothian. Midlothian. So, um, I you expect coached it. James River their first year, didn't you? Well, you played against us. James River. Yeah, that was my senior year. That was that was my first chance to coach varsity football. Wow. When James River I'm opened sorry. up. I had been at Clover Hill as a JV coach for seven years, and then James River opened up, and it gave me an opportunity to be a assistant coach on the varsity. Wow. 96? Uh, 95? Uh, it was 1995 football season. Coach W.T. Henshaw, who's been at Bird since 1983, said that was the worst football team he's ever seen. Well, we went on <laughs> <With> James River. <laughs> we went on 20. First they went on 20. Yeah, how'd you like James that? River did? Coach. Yeah. It was pretty fun, wasn't it? Here's, here's the interesting <laughs> thing. We went 0-20. Our, our wrestling team did pretty good. I was the head wrestling coach. Mm-hmm. But I went from an 0-20 assistant coach to get my first head coaching job yeah. at Dinwiddie. How'd that work out? We didn't do that great. but uh, What'd you learn? 
I, I learned to be better to my assistants. Well, so how did what, I was, what did yeah, you do to your important assist- important thing was I expected my assistants to have the same passion, the same discipline, the same everything that I had. Mm-hmm. Um, and I don't think that's a valid expectation if they don't want to be head coaches. Mm. Okay. So everybody has a role and a niche that they need to play, and to think that everybody's going to have the same passion that I have, uh, the same work ethic or the same uh, organizational skills uh, was inaccurate. And then obviously as a young coach, I didn't control my emotions very well when I expressed my disappointment. <laughs> um, so uh, that Why is this it, guy not president of the United it, it States? It didn't work out very well. <laughs> Can we get him to run for political office? Yeah. This and guy needs then to when be I went to Bird, in office running this country. When I went to Bird and under Coach Paul Kett, mm-hmm. I saw how a bunch of beer experienced coaches <laughs> yeah. well, respected each other, could have open conversations and disagreements and mm-hmm. not, not necessarily become a fisticuff. Um, and, really? Uh, they weren't fighting each other then? Not not disrespectfully. Okay. Um, <laughs> and and how they got got along. They they would have staff cookouts and it was it was a family a atmosphere. Family. Okay, so you can and, I know. And um, I learned a lot from a all of my mistakes. My first go around as a head coach. B how Coach Paul Kett and the staff at Bird at the time was kind of like a family event. Mm-hmm. Um, and. To know able to give me when I got my second opportunity to take full advantage of it. Like Bill Belichick, I mean, with the Browns, you know? And when he left to go to Hermitage, I was like, man, why is this guy leaving Bird to go to Hermitage? Man, this is the best job ever. I was the JV coach. I was like, man, it's a bad move, man. But he, I mean, that was a diamond in the rough, you yeah. know? And it was a great opportunity for him. But I was just a young kid then. I didn't understand wanting to be a head coach, nothing like that. So yeah. if it wasn't for him, I wouldn't be a coach or a teacher. He's the one that told me to go be a teacher. He told me a graduation at Bird that year and, you know, you know, God's been so good to me, and this is one of the, you know the best guys that I've ever been around. Man, that's saying a lot, man. Because you know, a lot of times you don't people don't give each other their flowers nowadays. Well, he knows how I feel about him. You know, <laughs> I'm sure. Look, we've, yeah. we've stayed. It's all that. love, man. All the time. Look, he he showed it to me. He was like, "Man, I'm gonna get Coach Kane. I'm gonna get Coach Kane to come on." I said, "You joke? <laughs> I need to come off yeah, small man. time, man." I guess if I believe it, it'll happen. I don't know. No, man. No. You working for Hometown Realty, selling there you houses. Go. That's right. Listen, yeah. Okay. Look, it, shout out to Hometown Realty and the Kane uh, see, group. Look, look, I need to have him on here to do this stuff. Like you just really <laughs> selling that, Coach. Like you know, and and have you always been into realtor? Like that's what you've done uh, all the time. Actually, my wife got into it first. Okay. Uh, the broker, well, it's connections to people you know th- through your life. Mm-hmm. My uh, college teammate and college roommate for two years, Mike Schnall, uh, who runs Hometown Realty. Um, so we sold a house and bought a house through him. My wife really enjoyed the process. My wife got into it first with him, mm-hmm. and then uh, when I got out of the the coaching, the head coaching at, at Hermitage, uh, I picked it up myself, and that's how we were able to. I get three daughters through college. My youngest is getting ready to be her senior year at Virginia Tech. Okay. Um, and so, you know, real estate has helped us get over that hump of paying for college because, you know, being a, a teacher and a coach in the high school level is not going to get paid no. college tuition. No, man. That, as the Chenault that you were talking about were the over at Lee Davis area, over the Mechanicsville area? Mike Chenault's the Lee Davis guy. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. Quarterback. Yep. Yeah, yeah, I remember those guys running Lee Davis over the lead. I keep forgetting about how good Lee Davis used to be too. I used to oh get- yeah, two thousand and one, my first game at Hermitage. Lee Davis was they were ranked number five in the area, and we opened up with them. And of course, we'd been two and eight for eight years, and then uh, we knocked them off the first game of the season by blocking a uh, punt and an extra point and. Um, make some special teams plays. Wow. Great special teams uh, plays. And then we stopped their two point conversion because they had a because uh, they hadn't gone before, and that's how we beat them. I think beat them by two points, like twenty six, twenty four, or something like that. Man, um, that's a throwback. And, uh, uh, that's that a- was that was Mac McConnell's. F- Last year, wow! Yeah, Matt, Matt McConnell, he's a legend. You know, he went on to coach at Randolph Macon after being the head coach there at Lee Davis, and you know that style of offense that he brought in there with you know under the center, one back, two tight, back, yep. inside zone, outside zone. Joe Douglas, I mean, he's the GM of the New York the, Jets. No, the Jets, you know? really? I, I, I did not know that was him. Yeah, he's he's got Makai Becton and Dwayne Brown. Brown, yeah. right? And yeah, then he had right. Morgan Moses. Right. Hey, hey, shout Morgan. out to Joe yep. Douglas, man. If he's not in the VHSL Hall of Fame, he should be. He went to University of Richmond. I think 
think I was a sophomore. We played against them. We were undefeated. We got beat. But I, when I was a kid, I remember I was just like you. You know, I'd get the paper in the morning. I'd yep. run out there on Saturday mornings and I'd get the paper and look to see how many yards the Lee Davis running back ran for. Yeah, because you know they was going to run for about at least two, two three hundred every you know, time. Nick Bernie, Adam Burke, Jack Jones, yeah, Jones. Antoine Lee, I, I, Ivy Hopkins, Ivy Hopkins. Yeah, yeah. Back, back, he had some back. good players. Yeah, he had a whole lot there. Back in them days, great man. tradition. Yeah, and also to forget uh, another kid that's at the Jets right now. Um, he went to Trinity, uh, Zane Lewis. Well, I didn't know that. Yeah, yeah. He uh, he he went to left Trinity, went to Air Force, defensive back. And he's at Trinity. Well, he all got right on, man. Yeah, yeah so great. we got we got some other local. Yeah, Eight oh four, man. It's all love, man. That's right. Yeah, I I gotta, gotta shout him out. But yeah, man. But um. Anything else you guys wanted to add, man? You know, like any shout outs that y'all want to give to anybody? Like, you know, about that you want to just recognize and, you know. I, you know, I, I just like to ask Coach Kane something like, you know, who were your mentors? Who were the coaches that you look up to? You know, I know you mentioned Coach Paul Kett, but and your dad, you know, and how how many coaches he helped and how great of a man he was. But who, who were the mentors that, that, that helped you along your, your way? Well, you mentioned I you your AD, Tyson, Bob Tyson, was my an assistant father, for Mike Smith at Crabbers. My oh, for Hampton. Yeah. Okay. was my mentor, but that's more of a, a role model. You mentioned that, right. Um, uh, and so, so he was. He was the one I never wanted to disappoint. Uh, the reason I wore a tie because he wore a tie every wrestling match. Yeah, it was, it was respect to him. Mm -hmm. um, so he was he was my mentor. I'm I'm very very fortunate to have my mentor to be my father. I know that's not common a lot of times uh, in this in this world we live right. in today. So I was very fortunate. And my mother uh, was a very humble uh, person, but. I could do no wrong in her eyes, and, and even though I did wrong a couple times, uh, but I could do no wrong in her eyes. So she built the confidence in me that I could accomplish, I could take the risk to try and be a head coach or whatever it is I wanted to do, mm -hmm. and because of the love she gave me growing up. So it was my parents, and I'm very, very fortunate to have that. Let me ask you one question. What do you like more? What do you enjoy more, coaching or selling homes? Coaching. Coaching. <laughs> that was an easy one, right? Because – Again, it goes back to football, football being a team thing. There's mm -hmm. so many people uh, that can enjoy that moment of the, of the victory um, mm -hmm. and the appreciation of the journey together. Mm -hmm. um, now, I will tell you this, uh, you know, selling a home is a huge deal and it's a life change. It can be a life changing thing for generations to come mm -hmm. getting into that. And it's a, so it's, it's another form of helping people when you're coaching, you're helping people. Right. When you're teaching math, you're helping people. I used to enjoy teaching the math club, math, not because I was fired about math. I never really was, mm -hmm. but I could <laughs> like help I people that struggle with it, mm -hmm. relate to it and learn it. And then the light goes on and give them a little confidance that they can do it. Mm -hmm. um, and that was a big thing. Yeah, I'll, I'll say something about math because not a lot of people talk about math very much. But, but this I first podcast math, talks about math ever. You can go look, down in his like, 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 go ahead, man. Because yeah, exactly. Because yeah, like, like, you, yeah, because mm -hmm. look, well, we going from ball in the VA and we gonna get some education so, here today. Uh, Coach Matt Bland, he runs the success <laughs> program at L.C. Bird. And Coach Bland developed this program in 2000. And Amazing this program, program helps kids transition from – you know, middle school to high school and sees them all the way to graduation and past graduation. So kids who are ninth and 10th are success one and two. And then when they're 11th and 12th, they're actually mentors mm -hmm. and they help the ninth graders and they go and do community service. And it's an incentive based program. Mm -hmm. You know, if you have a 3.0, they go on a field trip. We take them to a movie. We, we feed them CCs, you know, consequences, negative consequences. They say don't work on these kids but if they had they would do anything man to make sure they have that 3.0 so they get to go to that movie mm -hmm. but he had a tutor yeah, we a did. Math tutor he provides a ma uh, matt bland provides a free math tutor so there was a tutor named gus Valenus, and he, he was just an old guy from like long island and he said something about math he, he asked the class he said how many y'all play basketball mm -hmm. and like everybody in the I mean, i'm not talking about on a team i'm talking about how many of y'all ever played basketball and like um, you know, some of the kids raised their hand. Mm -hmm. You know, most of them did. And okay. he said, okay, well, how many Michael Jordans are there? How many Ja Morants are there? Mm -hmm. And they were like, uh, I don't know, not many. <laughs> well, everybody plays basketball, you know, but there ain't many that's great. It's the same, it's the same way with math. Mm -hmm. You know, 
there's not many people who are the Michael Jordans of math mm -hmm. and the John Morants and the greatest, you know, because, but those guys, like they invent Twitter and, and Facebook, right? They, they, do, they do algorithms and solve equations, but you can still play it. You can still do it, even though you might not be great at it. So that, that's my shout out about math. Yeah. <laughs> How do you feel about that? You know, being a math teacher? Well, yeah, everybody can do it. And, but what it, I always related math to one, if you want to be a great musician mm -hmm. or you want to be a great athlete, you have to practice. You, right. Mm -hmm. That is true. And math is the same thing. You have to put a little bit of practice in. Some people need to practice more than others I to be able to it, play man. that musical instrument or to be able to throw that football. You might have to practice a little bit more than another guy to catch up. And math the same way. The only thing I liked about math is simple problem solving. And, but but that skill, of that, that logical process of solving that problem uh -huh. makes you make logical decisions down the road and other things because your system, your, your thought process going through translates. It's a yep. process, just it's like process life. Now, just like, yeah. It's not about, you know, what is it, the product. It's about the process. Like Nick Saban, you know, don't worry about the scoreboard. Worry about the process because you can't control what's on that scoreboard, mm -hmm. but you can control that process. You can control, you know, how you focus, if you're on time, if you're working out, if you're, you know, at class studying, you know. So it's really math is a process, and mm -hmm. you have to focus on the process. It, it really is. Because that can distract you if you're thinking about, oh, tomorrow we play James River. What's the scoreboard going to be? No, what can I do today, you know, to help us, you know, get better? And that mentality was – Play the next uh, play. Play the play was was what we came to Hermitage with in 2001 because if you looked at Hermitage's scores over the p previous eight years when they were going two and eight, they were close games. Right. Until the fourth quarter, and then they would just lose. Mm -hmm. they, had the, they had the Sharpers. And, I mean, who else? Yeah, no, they, they, they were they were fairly successful when the Sharpers were there. Yeah, when the, yeah. After the Sharpers left, they had that eight-year of – those yeah, were, that, okay. yeah, that was and it was dead. It, it was a mental thing, and because you're worried about, oh, once it starts going bad, we're gonna do it again. Mm -hmm. So play the play was a mentality where you just wipe the cl slate clean after the play was over, and you do, like as you were saying, let's be great right here on this one play right here. Mm -hmm. And then later it developed when we were very successful to. So I don't care how great you were on that last play. We got to play this play. Right, so it right, came, right, from, it right. came from you can't get too high, you can't get too low. We got to focus right, right here, now. right now. Play Be great right play now. Play. Wipe it clean, then go to the next yeah, one. That was the whole play. You got to forget about it. Our mentality for the 17 years we were there, and I think it, it helped a lot. It really helped in the beginning. Uh, get when things didn't go perfect, uh, the mentality to keep fighting on the next play. Man, was it satisfying when you, like I said, you when you got to the program and you started off that was it was it just that much more satisfying that once you got it to where you wanted to get to, you was able to just ma like maintain it and take it where you wanted. To. Was it that much more satisfying growing the program? Uh, at the time, it never was because the goal was always to be a state champion, and mm -hmm. we was we were trying to get there. So the season always ended in disappointment. Mm -hmm. Um. From a from a competitor standpoint, um, so in the in those seventeen years, you never kind I never kind of got to that level. Now looking back on it, there's a lot of satisfaction mm -hmm. uh, on the people we helped out and, and the success we had. But going through it, no, no. But let let me ask you this question. One last question for me, and is, do you think if you was coaching in this era now? The way the system is now, the, the, you say the system is better. How many championships do you think you would have won now the way it's set up now versus from the previous, I guess, maybe All I can years. say is my goal would be to win it every year. <laughs> you could be Just like there. we did the 17 years but, we were there. He won't try to lose. <laughs> no, you know, going 24 7 65. This guy's a grinder, man. He went to every 7 on 7. He was there every weekend. He was there every night. Yeah, I mean, but I like, a lot of coaches be. now. They just getting the, the stipend, man, and they going home. They getting these. Two, like you got some coaches now. They soccer coaches and getting the football. Oh, I, don't job. I don't know any soccer <laughs> coaches, but I know these football coaches. They're out there. You know, they're up there. They're they're up late at night and they're they're early in the morning. And they got those kids working. That's why we're the eight oh four, and that's why we got the best coaches and the best programs and the best players. And we love oh, EA, man. We love eight oh four. And shout out to all the programs. Go yeah. back to your initial statement. I'm very excited about the. Uh, Two coaches we got now at, at UVA and Virginia Tech. I think they get it. I think they understand there's got to be a connection. And um, the high school I'm level, very yeah. excited about the path they're going to take their programs. Yeah, because I was reading that Coach Elliott, he said he laid out a plan of getting to the national championship or how he wanted to get there. And, and, and um, 
Uh, who's the coach at uh, Virginia Tech? Pry. 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 I already say Price. Coach Pry. Like, everybody's – all the coaches are really excited of just having them coming back for a while. It was a void. Mm-hmm. And just having the coaches, when they all both of the coaches came in and they was at, did they come to your school as well? Yes, sir. Yeah, they was coming like going visiting all these kids and everything like that, and it was just exciting to see that man. And I'm I'm just so excited because I remember back in the early eight, late eighties and the nineties, UVA and Tech man was just like always battling back and forth, and to see that now, you know, to get it back to where it was. It, it's good. It's good for the state, man, because it gave these kids something to look forward to. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. But yeah, man, I'm going to wrap this up, man. Um, anything else y'all you might want to add? I can't yeah. think of anything right now. I yeah, can talk all night. But yeah, I, I know. Yeah. <laughs> but it's okay. But no, but I, I, I want to thank you guys for coming in and again, um, for me not, not being myself today, but I, I really... Thank you, guys. Hey man, thank you, man. We're here for you, man. No, man, I appreciate it, man. No, no, thank you because, you know, 804 football for me, um, people don't know this, but I've always enjoyed football much more than I grab basketball. Mm-hmm. Basketball is where I gravitated to. Mm-hmm. But for me, on Friday nights, I would rather be at a football game during the season. This is like my favorite Friday part of the lights. season. Favorite part of the season. When the end of August coming through the December – I'm at a football game no matter who, what school it is because I didn't have a school that I really could support. But my school is no longer around, so I'm just a free agent. <laughs> oh, you got free tickets at L.C. Bird. Your name's at the gate. Well, you, Coach, I thank you, man. I thank you so much, man. I, I really appreciate that. I, I just want you to come on here, man, and the way you shouted me out. Um, it really meant a lot to me, Coach, because these gentlemen here mm-hmm. helped me is trying to they do everything possible to help ball in the VA get yeah. to where we get to. And sometimes, you know, I'll be like, I don't know about that. But for what you did was to take that tweet yeah. and you shouted it out. And then I said, man, just call me and you yeah. did you say, I'm gonna put it on Twitter, put yeah. it on Facebook. That meant a lot to me. Well, I mean, when you you respect quality and you expect people who do things the right way. And when you see you, the production of this and the thumbnails that they produce on YouTube and Instagram and, you know, this set here, you know, coach asked me, are they legit? I was like, heck yeah, they're legit. Like other people, they have a Zoom. Right. You know, this ain't a Zoom. This is a professional studio. So, you know, shout out to Morset uh, Studios. They do a great job in Ball and VA. You know, I mean, I guess no, they, they, they they rises to the top and this is it. Well, to me, I felt like, Today, um, this is like a, a milestone for me because having you know legend Coach mm-hmm. Kane here, you know, and I, and you probably don't feel this way, man, but I would have never thought in a million years that I've had someone that's accomplished what you did at the high school level, coaching as yourself. And the winningest coach in Hamilton. The, the, yeah, to come in here to, to to sit with me to talk to me. And I know it's on behalf of Coach Taylor here, but you Lewis didn't have to come, and I want to thank you. Um, Cause it meant a lot to me, and I just didn't know when he called me and said, "I was like, what? Like, wow, okay, yeah, we we're doing something here." So thank you, Coach, for coming thank in you, and, and well, I'd talking. I like to give back, and uh, if, just, you, I'll give you my number and give me a call. And yeah, we'll do liked, this again. He, he said he liked podcasts. Yeah, yeah, I yeah no, no, time. no. I, I want you to come back. I I'm not a music guy. I mm-hmm. always want to learn, and you can learn from podcasts. So. Yeah. I listen to a lot of podcasts. I well, don't know why they don't get him on the radio or a podcast. I and mean, this guy knows more about football than anybody. Well, yeah, you got all these networks. Now you got yeah. um, Times Dispatch and, and, and Virginia Network coming out with a podcast now. And Who? For, it, Virginia Sports Network yeah. and Times Dispatch. Mm-hmm. Supposed to come out with some weekly high school podcast with coaches or whatever. I don't know. Maybe I made a step. Maybe everybody stepped the game up. I, I don't know. I'll take credit for that. There you I go. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I, I'm just—he's a competitive guy, man. If you have to coach against him, man, you better bring your A game, or you're gonna get steamrolled. No, I, I saw yeah. how so intense he was on you, the sideline, man. man. You know, me come, going to Hermitage games meant a lot, man. That stadium around you, the Rose, it's a unique oh, place. Oh, it's stadium. a very unique place. So you coming in there, and you going there, just like you just felt like uh, Rudy. The movie Rudy when he came out there for the first time, and the daddy was coming out to see his son, and he said, "Rudy, said, I'm coming in the game today." And you know how you just come out to the Hermitage Stadium you can just look and just see the field yeah it's like man and the kids always think that the fans are against them 
You know, that was one of the things my late friend Jimmy Rogers said that coached with me at Meadowbrook. Like, I hate this stadium because there's nobody behind us. Yeah. Everybody right, behind everybody's us. right. Yeah. Home field advantage. Right. You know? So, yeah, I've always liked it. And just thank you for all the memories that you gave us over there, man. The wins, the losses, again. There was I a just, lot of people that went into it. And you might have saw my face, but I, I, I was very fortunate to have a great staff, a uh, supportive administration to let me do my thing. Yes. And players that were willing to put in the time and try and get better every day. Absolutely. And I know you're proud of all of those players, the current coaches over there. Shout out to them. You know, shout out to a lot of the former players that you had that, that did very well. And same to you, Coach. Thank you, man. Thank and you. I know you're going to do a fantastic Anytime, job and, you know, and, and getting your kids ready. Yes, sir. So I definitely will be there. Yes, sir. Thank and you. And you guys will always have a seat. So anytime you guys want to come back, please, don't hesitate. Come on. I think this may be the, the first place that I've ever been invited back. That's impressive. <laughs> no, man. <laughs> no, why Usually I get like banned. No, no, no. I think you did well. You carried the show today, man. No, man. Y'all carried me. No, man. So I've no. always said if we could bottle this guy's energy, you, you, you man, don't make a lot of money. I, man, definitely. Yeah, you need to sell it. me around for how many weeks now? <laughs> yeah, he's going to be taping me, and I'm have my own podcast and YouTube channel. You need Probably one. Netflix. You, know, you need one, man. You need one. But, yeah, but thank you, man. We're going we gonna to go ahead and sign out. So thank again, Coach Kane and Coach Taylor. And I appreciate everybody watching. And please like, subscribe, and comment. You know, we definitely need it. That's how we keep mm -hmm. the lights on in here. Yep. This place this place ain't cheap. Oh, no doubt. It ain't cheap. So, But we want to give you guys the best content available. And, you know, we're out.